And we look at this in many different ways, uh, Robin, and welcome. Thank, thanks for being here. It's good to uh, be with you. And I know you're a, you just got here, so we appreciate uh, A for effort um, for being here. So a lot of companies during the pandemic, I think, added too many people. I, I don't think that's, that's the case here, is it? Is, is this just uh, a, a preemptive move if we have a slowdown this year based on a Fed-induced slowdown? So you figure, I'm gonna get it out of the way now? So for us, when we look, we, we had a very solid year in 2022. We we're actually quite pleased with our performance and how we performed. But the past couple of years have seen higher expense growth than we want to see as a company. And so we're taking some steps to make sure that we put ourselves on a good path for 2023 and beyond. And where did you find, um, I don't want to call it fat, you don't want to refer to, to uh, employees like that, but where did you find room to make some expense reduction? So look, across our firm, and remember, we touch about 20% of all investable assets in the world across our platform. We're a global firm. About 40% of our activity is outside of the U.S., and we have people outside the U.S. Uh, equivalently. Uh, we've looked up and down across our population, but we've been really focused on being efficient at the management layer. So we saw bureaucracy in our firm, we saw some inefficiency, and we set ourselves on the right path to go forward. And we think that's the right thing to do. We're stewards of expenses and we have to help our clients navigate their expenses as well. And that's we're, we're really in the business of doing that. Europe's outperformed, or at least it's performed better than expectations. And, and some of the, the bourses are, uh, have performed well also. What, have, have they been able to dodge the energy-induced uh, in, uh, slowdown? And are they on par with the type of slowdown you see in the United States now? Or would it still be relatively worse on the continent? So, you know, what our data has been showing us is that we've probably seen peak dollar uh, at this point. Uh, and we've also probably seen uh, peak selling of U.S. equities, at least for the moment. Uh, and again, yeah. that's through our data sets that we actually see. We see some of these tipping points through our iFlow data. Which, Is that uh, a bottom, Robin? Which, well, peak, I'm, peak not, I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to call the bottom of the market. Um, but that's certainly what our data has shown us is that, that we've seen an abatement of some of this selling in equities that we've seen over the course of the past year. That's Significant, right. considering how many assets that you manage. So you're not a technician, obviously. So no final capitulation low with the VIX at 40. That's not necessary. It could be a long-term base that was built that, that sets up a, a, a better our, 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 our economics team have a point of view that we'll probably see, see slightly higher rates in the U.S. than the market currently predicts. We don't have any data for that. That's actually their perspective. But we do also perceive uh, the risk of a l staying higher for longer than the market is currently expecting, or at least is priced into the market. And uh, it's obviously it's going to be data driven. Nobody knows the answer to that question. But it, it seems uh, to us that there's certainly a risk that we'll actually see that. And then, of course, equity markets will take their cue from that.